Or as they start your equipment, if you'll turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to begin by looking at several different scriptures. First Corinthians 15. <clears throat> We've been talking t about kind and how the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, when Adam and Eve ate of that, they became of a particular kind. And um, it was different than what God had made them. They were made after his image and meant to proceed on to the tree of life, which was a higher form of life even than what they knew at that point. <clears throat> and, of course, this tree of life reappears at the end in the book of Revelation. But... Um, <clears throat> We were discussing how, you know, there are a million different kind of sins that a person can sin, okay? I mean, there's so, you know, in fact, I'm sure there's more than a million because, because uh, India has over 300 million idols, uh, gods. So there's got to be more sins than gods, I would think, you know. It's just my projection, I don't know. It's the way I lived in my BC days. But, um, but, but, but with all of that, um, all of that, all, whatever sin, whatever any of that, we must realize that with God, the thing that broke his heart was the change of kind, that we were no longer after his kind. And he sets about to bring about that oneness Again, more than a reconciliation, but a reconciliation by oneness. So, um, <clears throat> and so, um, uh, during the break, uh, John mentioned to me uh, the scriptures in James that says, you know, that the, the James is writing to his readers, and he says, you know. It's not good that bitter waters come out of what's supposed to be a sweet fountain. Okay, now that's, that begins to show you, he didn't say, oh, or not only, you know, not only a bitter fountain with bitter waters and a good fountain with sweet waters, but there shouldn't be a, a dirty fountain and there shouldn't be a, and start naming off a million different things. He just makes it two things, two different kinds. And the two kinds, the point of those scriptures is the two kinds shouldn't be mixing. Okay? All right. So in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, it says this, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. God, it can't get any more simple than that. Who dies? Well, only the sinners. That's the way we would say that, you know. But he says all that are of the kind of Adam, that fallen kind, not because they sin, but because they change kind, that's why they sin. And every sin, even if it was, um, let me just say it like this, even if it was morally against God, it's still coming out of another kind that is not his kind. So the, the, the source of that fountain, folks, is kind. Not what it's doing. All right. Now God sees it that way. As in Adam, all die. And in Christ, all. <clears throat> the, use of the, word, the use of the word all is for both of those. All in Adam all in Christ. You see, we, when we say all, we would include everybody, but God doesn't because he sees, uh, somewhere I wrote, God sees through, parenthesis around it, God sees through kind colored glasses. <laughs> that that's how he sees. And that's hard for us to understand, but that's how he sees. Okay, so 
When he says all, he says, well, all in Adam. And when he says all, he says, well, all in Christ. There's only two kinds, and this is the result of that kind, and this is the result of that kind, and this is how I see it. And folks, when it gets right down to it, it doesn't matter how we see it, and it doesn't matter how theologians see it. It matters how God our Father and how our Lord sees it and how the Holy Spirit sees it. And that needs to be present seeing for us. We're the body. The eyes are in the head. He's the head, but the body should take that whole thing in too <clears throat> and receive from the head. All right, let's give you another example of that so that we can really see that this is in truth the way it is. Let's turn to Matthew, Matthew chapter 25. So we're still looking at kind here. And we're still trying to, but, but not just seeing that, we're trying to see, is this truly the way God sees? Okay? So what is our present search on right now? Not just on kind, but to see if, is this the way God really sees it? All right? So we're in Matthew 25 and verse 30... Um, well, we'll do 31 first. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered, what is the next three words? Next three words after I stop, ga after gathered. Somebody? All the nations. And he shall separate them one from another as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left hand. All right, <clears throat> get the picture. Hear the, hear the heart of the Lord, not just picture some end time eschatological event, but see the way God sees all the time. Do you understand what I'm saying? We could read that and put that off just to some eschatology that may not, you know, happen for another thousand years or ten thousand, who knows? But that's the way God sees right now is according to kind. All right, so let's get the picture. Here's God. He's, he's there before everybody. And gathered before him are all nations. Okay, that means, folks, that means every culture and language and every kind of person and group, people group that has ever been. That includes all, you know, I remember when we were, uh, when we were ministering in uh, Nicaragua, and I can't even remember the number now because it's been a lot of years since, that I was, since I was there, but they said, back off in these rainforests are hundreds of people groups that we've never even categorized, much less found a language, you know, discovered their language and all that kind of stuff. Well, if that's true, folks, if that was true in Nicaragua, I guarantee in Colombia and Brazil, and because I've been, I've been down in those rainforests too, and there are people groups that they've, they've still yet to discover. All right, but then to consider all that they have and consider all of that before the Lord and instead of the Lord going, you know, first just individually, him going, um, hey, Bob, come here, you're first up. You know, and calling Bob up and going, okay, here's your problem, buddy. You pretty much are hard-headed, first of all. He didn't do that. I mean, I know, I know it's eternity, <laughs> but this is going to take a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But he also doesn't go, he also doesn't go, okay, you uh, Chinooka, you know, natives from the rainforest in Colombia or something like that, step forward and they, you know, they got the little bones in their nose and their little spears. And, yeah, and he goes, okay, look, you got to stop eating people, okay? You know, yeah. You know, all of, you know, all of, we, we have such, you know, you're laughing, but we, we're the ones who have these weird concepts. Don't blame me. <laughs> all right. But instead, what does he do? It's important what he does. It's important that we don't just hear or see an event, but that we see something as to how God operates. 
how he sees things, okay? Look at it like an alien, because he is alien to us. We're alien to him, you know. He sees through this kind of glasses that, that discerns kind. And he goes, okay, here we go. We got these mass, all nations, but really there's only two kinds here. Sheep on my right hand, goats over here. That's it. All right. So, so what are we doing? We're discerning when we read this scripture. We're doing more than thinking about the end time and hoping I'm a sheep. We're saying, you know what? My, his emphasis is on kind here, and my emphasis needs to be on kind. I need to get with him and start seeing the way he does because clearly I don't. All right? And, and here's the clearly I don't. We walk into the mall or we walk out into the street or the neighborhood, and basically we judge everybody on an individual basis and we don't see anything about kind. All right. Yes, Carolyn? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, she was saying that both sheep and goats say, bah, they sound the same, and there's a lot of similarities and stuff. <clears throat> and God is using the example of sheep and goats, but you do understand that Jesus is the one sitting on the throne, and he's the Lamb of God, and he's the one that's, the, the nations that are gathered to him are of that spirit and of that kind. Okay, so all of those people that are there that are of the sheep group aren't particularly woolly. It's not, a, it's not something that you perceive by the surface. It's something that you must know what it is that God sees of this kind over here off the tree of life or of this kind off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, and, uh, and I can tell you, you know what? I... I, can, I have been around people, and a lot of times people betray themselves with their mouth. Yeah. Even a fool is counted wise if he holds his tongue. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've been around people, and man, they, you know, somebody started talking about somebody and this situation and that situation, and Man, it's all, it, it, it's as if, and I'm just saying, I'm standing there, and it's as if what's flowing out of their mouth is a branch from this tree of good and evil. It's just like, it's like the roots go down into that person and they're deeply entrenched in it and, and everything is seen in light of good and evil, which we think is Christianity. Good is God, you know. You know, we say God is good. Well, God is good, but good is not God. I mean, you know, let's be real here. And it's just like this flow, like this tree was, you know, uh, anybody see the movie The Fountain, you know? It's like this tree is just coming up out of a minute. But in this case, it's just all this of, of, of everything is slanted either towards good or evil, you know? And what they're saying is, well, you know, my preferences are so-and-so. He's good. The thing that I don't prefer is brother so-and-so. He's bad. Well, why is he bad? Well, because this and this happened, which didn't make me comfortable, or it took something away from me, or I didn't get the glory, or, you know. And you just see the heart of this tree is selfishness. And it not, because it knows good and evil, it judges and it has, this tree has no right to judge. It must be judged. The cross must judge this tree and this kind. Yes, did you have your hand up all ago and did you forget? <laughs> Yeah. 
That's exactly right. And you know, we have made it a definition, and that's allowed us to look at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or look at good and evil situations, and judge good things as being God, because we say, well, God is good, therefore. Right. And Absolutely. It's, it, is a, it is a way of judging things by good or evil and assuming because we can see the difference that we're good really I mean we go well that wasn't good that's evil well this is good you know and we go well, I, I'm going with the good you're not going anywhere you're still sitting in the limbs of the same tree you know you got your swing hooked up to it and you go oh. you know at least I'm not with them yes you are Hanging out of the same tree. All right, let's go to John, Gospel of John, chapter 3. This is Jesus speaking here. <clears throat> Verse 6, John 3, 6. How many of you know John 3, 16? Can you quote it? How many of you know John 3, 6? How many of you know 1 John 3, 16? All right, <clears throat> let's try John 3, 6 then. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. All right. Now, you know, this is Jesus talking. He's got those same glasses, those same colored glasses that God has in the end when all nations stand before him and he's getting ready to judge it on the kind that they are. He's not caught up in all of the events and all of this, per se. Uh, let's just say that once you're determined whatever kind you are, and if you're of the wrong kind, you're going to be dealt with according to your works. But you do realize that as far as heaven or hell, you're not, if you're born again, you're not going to be judged according to your works. Not for rewards or whatever, but you're not going to go to heaven or hell based on that. They, they are not either. They are going to be judged for them. But the determining factor is they're kind. You could even say, think about this with me. You could even say they're going to hell for one reason. Jesus died for everybody and to forgive everybody. They're going to hell for one reason. They rejected Jesus. Well, when, when, okay, we all know that. We all think that. But isn't it reality that we become one with Jesus and the reason why we're really different at all is because of that oneness and not just because of some magical work he did. He goes, here, look, it's official. You know, read that twice a week and you'll be okay. You know, but rather we're one with him. Therefore, we're of another kind. Therefore, to... Now just follow this. Therefore, to reject him is to reject that kind. Well, then you're not reconciled. Remember reconciliation? <laughs> then you're not reconciled. All right. Now, uh, by speaking here, Jesus is saying the only thing that really matters is that you be born into another kind. You must be born again. Am I right or wrong? Okay. Now, let's take kind out of that, and let's just think of that the way the average Christian thinks. Oh, you got to be born again. It's something that you got to go down to an altar, and you got to say a certain thing, you know, and, you know, yes, Jesus, and I want you, and forgive me, and all of that stuff. You know, come into my heart. Right? And yet... And yet the New Testament never says, ask Jesus into your heart. And that there's not a general prayer of salvation that you pray. In fact, it says just confess that Jesus is Lord. And, ah, but what does it mean for him to be Lord? It means you've changed kind. What does it mean to be born again? It means you've changed kind. What does it mean to be reconciled? It means... The kind that you were was put to death, and now you're of his kind because he is your life, and you're one with him of this kind. Over and over and over and over and over and over. So Jesus just makes it simple. Whatever's of the flesh is flesh. You say, 
Well, whatever is of the flesh does flesh. Jesus goes, forget about does. That which is flesh is. Yes. Yes. And let me stop and make this clear. When I say forget about, I'm not, I'm not belittling, you know, the fact that doing people wrong, sinning against your brother, you know, stealing, you know, stealing other people's stuff. I'm not belittling that or trying to make light of that. I'm just saying that's just the fruit of the problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not making light of sins. I'm just saying the Lord dealt with everything on this tree by cutting it down. He didn't go pick it off and take each one and, you know, stick a little poison needle in it and go, I got you, you were bad. And, you know, now, yeah, I'll throw you away. And, yeah, you know, raging against sin. He just walked up with an axe and whap, but he did it in, at the cross in his own death. So it's serious to him, but what's more serious to him is that we come into him, not just receive him as Savior, come into him and be partakers of his kind and manifest his nature and his love and his forgiveness and his self-giving, and that all of that actually not just be good works for God, but out from his kind. So he says... Whatever is flesh, it's just flesh. And whatever is spirit, it is. You can, that which is flesh is. And that which is spirit is. And there's only two kinds. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's what he's saying. And it's not complicated. We make it complicated. Worse than that, we make it something other than that. And, and again, let me stop and pause. I know that there are a whole lot of other things, you know, this isn't the only reality, but you gotta admit now, I mean, you don't have to admit, but you, you must consider, when you go all the way back to the beginning with the original sin and everything, it was a change of kind. It wasn't just the act of eating crackers, if you remember how I put it, like, you know, or an apple or whatever that God went, oh, oh, it's horrible. I can't believe you ate an apple. We don't eat apples here. You see what I mean? Oh, that's worse than, you know, that's worse than, you know, sleeping with your neighbor's wife. And Adam go, what's a neighbor? <laughs> he don't know. He don't know. He don't know about any of that. You know, that's better than killing your neighbor. What's a neighbor, you know? You know, I mean, I've often thought of this, honestly. I've thought, if I was Adam and that happened, and God goes, oh, man, I'm upset. I go, dude, chill. You know, it was just an apple, okay? It's not that big a deal. I was wrong. I disobeyed. Okay, you know. I, I admit it. I disobeyed. But, hey, we're just starting this thing off. Let's stay on track. He go, there is no on track. You are of another kind from me. You are separated not just by, you see, we're, you're not just separated by a wall. You're separated in kind if there was no wall. God, you know, God gets close to that kind. He goes, he, he's automatically repelled because it's not out from him. See? And, he, and it's not a, it's not a, mental thing with God, like, well, I just don't like what you did. See, it's not vengeance or all of those petty things that the Greek gods <laughs> fight over and get into. It's not, you know, it's not that kind of petty stuff. It is, I am repelled by this other kind. And what I, cre and here's the, I created you to be of my kind, you know, and now you're not. And it was through this act, but the thing that hurts me isn't that you're just going around sinning. The thing that hurts me is that you would never go around sinning if you were of my kind, because it wouldn't be in your heart to. And that, that then if you were of his kind and you sin, and is it not true that Christians can still sin, is it? 
Yes, it is. But if you're of his kind and you do, now he's not repelled. We can come boldly to the throne of grace because the one seated on that throne is the one we're seated in and part of. It's a whole different ball game now, see? see? So this, is, this thing isn't about failures. It's not about all that stuff. And, and the, the key is, is that if you've been born again, it's time, to, it's time to accept what is true in his heart instead of your thing. But you know, and I've realized people get under condemnation but you know, what, what would be the main reason why somebody who loves Jesus and is genuinely saved and believes that God accepts them basically as a theological truth, what would be the one thing that would send them into condemnation? Okay, what else? I, I think religion. And, you know, Jesus had the hardest time with the Pharisees more than he did anybody else. <laughs> you know, he kind of went, bro, you, you generation of vipers. You know, it's like, you, what did he say? He said, you proselyte and you go, you'll go around the world to make one proselyte and make him twofold the child of hell that you are. Okay, and the thing, you know, thank God they didn't believe he is a Messiah because that would have just devastated them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, so if, but if they actually believe that he is, they're going, you know, and this is, this is, this is the remarks from, from people who still see from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Well, I'm, I'm a good person. You know, Jesus says, you're making him too... You know, you go out of your way to make people like you, same kind, not his kind, make them twofold the child of hell. Here. I'm a good person. I'm, you know, what I did was not bad. Now, okay, we do this all the time. We do it all the time. We hear something or, or you know, even in my sharing, this happens so often. Um, I'll be up here sharing, and somebody invariably will come and say, oh, "You know, are you, is are you is this? Are you talking about my situation?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I go, well, "I really don't know your situation." <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, you know. I know what applies generally across the board, but now, you know, it's kind of like, you, you, you talking to me, Randy? No, but is, uh, you better get up like Samuel and go check and see if it's the Lord. Because there may be God talking to you. But I don't know. But folks, we're all guilty of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're all guilty of doing things that we think are good and helpful and whatever else, and only to find out, or maybe never find out, that it was the wrong tree because it's the wrong kind, and we're, you know, we're going, well, I want to be Christ-like. You know, that's another problem why we do this stuff. We're trying to be Christ-like. Good luck with that. You know? You're just a puny little human, and he's the son of God. Try to be like him. Let's see how good you do. You know, you're not going to measure up. It must be Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay. So eventually, this stuff is meant, I'll just say it like this, this stuff is meant to crush us. And that can be taken wrong because God doesn't want to crush us, but in another sense, he does. I mean, worse than crushes, he wants us crucified with Christ. But I, I, use, I chose the word crush, not that it's the best one or I'm the wisest guy to speak on this stuff. But I chose it and I said it because, and my experience may not be your experience, but for me, God had to break a bunch of stuff in me. There was a lot of self-righteousness in me. Somebody said, you know, even if, you know, if somebody addressed 
certain issues or whatever, I would just bristle, you know. But then I learned to be spiritual and not show them what I was feeling. You know, with time, I got spiritual, where I felt the same exact stuff, you know, but I just didn't let them know. And I, for some reason, I felt so spiritual. That's the opposite. Of, that's hypocrisy now. You know what I mean? You probably, yeah, might as well reach up and slap them. You'd be better off and feel better. I'm kidding. That's usually me that's correcting you. Don't hit me. <laughs> but, <laughs> the, uh, but I mean, you know, and I would, I would, you know, then I would shove all that down. And I remember even sometimes when people were talking to me, I remember thinking, well, this person doesn't know me. This, not, this isn't right. This, this isn't true. I, they don't even know my motives. I was doing this because of this, this, and this. And every response I had was, they're evil and I'm good. You remember me sharing on Proverbs before? The Lord had to teach me that too. You're reading the book of Proverbs and you just keep going through it. Well, the wicked man does so and so and so and so, but the righteous man does this and this. And I always, every time I read any of those in the Proverbs, I was the righteous man. Didn't matter what it was. I mean, you know, that's how I read the, the Proverbs. It's like, yeah, you know, and then a lot of the scriptures, when it talked about the wicked man, I could actually bring somebody to mind. You know? Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about, Lord. I know. You know, it's funny. I guess you knew about them way back then when you wrote, wrote this. You know? And the Lord, finally, one day, the Holy Spirit said, look, you're the wicked man. Jesus is the righteous man. I went, Ugh. I mean, it blew me away. Then I knew it was true. You know, when he says it, it's kind of hard to argue with, you know. Like if Randy says that to you now, you can go, oh, I ain't. But when he said it to me, it was like, you know, you got me. And I realized I'm seeing the scriptures and trying to come up with an understanding of them, knowledge of good and evil, without seeing Christ. I'm seeing me and other people. I'm judging myself by others. I'm judging them by me. Paul said you shouldn't do that. Says so you shouldn't do that. So, as you can see, in my that's why I use the word crush, <laughs> because it, it's uh, um, there are certain bulbs that when you crush them, they have a safety thing, and all of the glass breaks onto the inside, and there's sort of this plastic shell over, it. and it's like the Lord had to take me and go. <laughs> And everything broke and crushed, but it didn't fall apart. And he broke all, and I say all, he broke pride and he broke uh, self-centeredness. Basically, he showed me the, you know, he showed me the cut down tree and that crushed. You see what I mean? That, that's you. We're talking about you, Randy. We're talking about, you remember so-and-so and how you judged based on this, and he says, what if they weren't evil? What if they actually were used of me to develop you so that there would be more Christ in you? What if they were actually my servants? What if they were my tools for you because I love you, and yet you're over here on the tree of the knowledge, good and evil, con condemning them? And I had to go, you know, you remember the story of Job and at the end when God just goes, were you there when I created? Do you know this? Or do you know all this? Thing? I don't know nothing. <clears throat> there has, you know, again, maybe not the best choice of words, but the value of a, of a crushing uh, where it just caves in. And you realize, oh, God, you know, like David, you know, it's, you know, he's ready to go kill this guy. You know, the prophet came to him and said, there's a guy, and he only had one sheep, and the guy came and took it away from him. What are we going to do about it? And David goes, well, we'll kill that dude. We'll get him, man. We're righteous. That, that's evil, and we're good, and we're going to stand up for good. And the prophet goes, uh, we're talking about you. What? <laughs> no, no. I'm over here. I'm the, I'm the good. 
No, you're the good and the evil. You're all of it rolled in one, and you're not Christ in this matter. It's not Jesus. And I, well, I say you're not Christ. You're not allowing Christ to come out of you. It's not Jesus. It's you and your self-righteous, pharisaical way of, you know, it's like when Jesus came into Jerusalem and they're waving palm branches. I'm over there with a tree of knowledge, good and evil, with both the fruit, waving it before the Lord, you know. And everybody else waving palm branches. I'm going, oh, look what I got. Yeah, I'm honoring you with all my great knowledge, <laughs> good and evil. <laughs> You know, the Lord said, hey, stop the mule. <laughs> Buddy, put that down. <laughs> you know. You're not in the flow of what's going on here. <laughs> you know. And that's really what he has to do. He has to stop you in your tracks. And this teaching won't do it. You know, I mean, this class, this moment, God can touch our hearts or whatever, but there's a process that it requires, and there's a prayer again, amen? There's a prayer that should be prayed in the middle of this. There's a, you know, when the Spirit of God, when I feel Him, when I, I, I know I'll forget later on. I learned this in Bible school. When I was in Bible school, I would go, I'm going to remember that after this class, you know, and I'm going to pray that. And I'd never even remember what they said. I just remembered the Lord was dealing, you know, knocking on my heart. And I go, oh, and I learned. I said, God, I, I can't. I will forget this. So right in the middle of the class, I'm sitting there and I'm going, you know, Lord, you're talking to me and I want to be with you and I want to be after your kind. And I know theologically, spiritually, you've settled that and I am after your kind. But clearly, I haven't lined up fully with that. Well, who has fully lined up with that? Do you understand what I mean? Don't feel, you know, we go, uh, and I'm just a terrible person. Well, join the club. We all are. We all need Jesus. Is that really so bad? I don't want to admit that I really need Jesus. What? I mean, really? You know, yeah, I'm ashamed to admit that I need Jesus. Really? I would think that the least is the greatest. You know what I'm saying? You know, the least over there going, I really need you. I was going, you got it, baby. You know, and the righteous over there, I don't, I just don't want to be seen as somebody that needs Jesus. I want everybody to know I need Jesus. Because I do. And you know what? And I want him. And I am, I am not afraid to be, you know, some of you have been around long enough, man. I, if, if, man, if, it, if the bombshell hits me, I'll get up here and I'll, I'll just lay it all out. Tell you how much I need the Lord. And usually the response from the congregation isn't, what a horrible man, or whatever. It's like everybody gathers around praise and says, well, you, if you want the Lord, we want to pray for you. I like being in a group like that. There's some churches, you better keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you tell somebody anything you've done wrong, they'll crucify you for it, you know. <laughs> All right, so that which is flesh is flesh. Uh, let me see if I can fin finish with this. You know, I'm, I'm sorry I talk a lot in between these sentences here. but Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. <clears throat> All right. Remember what Jesus said now. He said <clears throat> in John 3, 6, that which is flesh is flesh. And that which is spirit is spirit. Amen? All right. Galatians 5. And I can't tell you what verse until now. Yes, Lord. I see. Verse 13. <clears throat> For brethren, she's not talking to sinners. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to what? The flesh, that which is flesh is flesh. But by love serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. <clears throat> but if you bite and devour one another, all right, so here we go. 
He's, he's talking about being after a certain kind, and he says, here's the way that we are. You know, what's the first and second commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. All right. <clears throat> um, he says, have liberty. God wants you to have liberty. And he says, but make sure that liberty is not contrary to nature. Is that kind of what it's saying here, brother? You have been called into liberty, only used not for an occasion to the flesh, but, so here's the specific occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For if you bite and devour, do you see, anybody see sweet water and bitter water there? See two different kinds going on there? All right. That's what he's dealing with here. All right, so let's read on. Um, <clears throat> Verse uh, 15, we'll finish it up. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right, what did Jesus say? That which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit. So he's saying, don't just believe in the spirit, but walk in the spirit. <clears throat> and, and when Jesus said that which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. I'm just going to ask you, and you don't have to agree with me or agree with anybody else, you know. But when he said that which is flesh is flesh, or that which is spirit is spirit, was he talking about spirit is spirit being the Holy Spirit? Or was he talking about the contrast to the flesh being a certain kind? And the contrast of that flesh is spirit, which relates to his kind. I'm just asking you, when Jesus said that which is flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit, was he talking about the Holy Spirit? All right. I believe that he wasn't talking about the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit is the one who brings us into this. And interestingly enough, the wording in here, and even, even in some of the places we've already read, when it says spirit, it doesn't say the spirit. It says spirit. Okay. Pardon? The realm. The realm, okay. But certainly the kind realm. In other words, of God. You know, of the Spirit. Not just from. Like the Spirit on you. Of the Spirit of what God is. <clears throat> All right. Because he's going into, okay, well... Two different kinds here. One kind bites and devours one another. Amen. So that's, that's, that's flesh, isn't it? And that's the realm of nature. But the other kind serves. Serves one another. And I don't know that we have at any point the Holy Spirit who's come to, the Holy Spirit, come to do that. He's come to reveal Christ and by the nature of Christ, because Christ, we're one with Christ and that's our way into <clears throat> the Godhead, is to, is to bring, the Holy Spirit's work is to bring forth the Spirit of Christ. Now you can see this in Romans 8, and this is not really the time to, to um, deal with that, but, but let's go on. Even if you hold this as the Holy Spirit, let's go on and just see what it says. <clears throat> um, Verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery. Okay, so that, that's some pretty bad stuff, and most of us feel pretty good because we're not into those things. Amen? Praise God. Thank God. Wait a minute. What's the next one that says here? Uh, um, jealous, uh, hatred. Anybody ever feel like you hate somebody? Hatred, strife, uh, jealousy, wrath, meaning getting uh, upset, factions, meaning divisions, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and here's the clincher, and the like. Whatever else is of that kind. 
can you say amen to that? Whatever else belongs to that kind, that's what we're dealing with, okay? All right, but then he says, of which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, here we go, but the next verse, 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long to, okay, first of all, it makes it absolutely clear that that which is flesh is us, and that which is spirit is the fruit of the spirit, not the fruit of Christians. Well, that's a new concept for some people, though. I mean, you know, they go, well, I've never noticed that said the fruit of the spirit as if it's not our fruit. That it is the fruit of the flesh, folks, is us and it is flesh it's the wrong kind and we'll stand in judgment for it but when it comes to love joy peace gentleness meekness faith you know all those things that's not our fruit you can't teach that to people you don't you don't write the fruit of the spirit on the board and try to talk people into doing it You, do you? I mean, if it's the fruit of the Spirit, don't you just let, whether it's the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, you let that do what it does. All right, so, verse 23, meekness, self-control, against such there is no law. Look at verse 24, and they that are Christ have crucified. Lord, do you always have to bring up the cross in this stuff? <laughs> Robert says yes. I mean, I've heard the fruit of the Spirit taught so many times without the cross ever mentioned. And here it says, okay, make sure that if we're going to talk about the fruit of the Spirit, that you're dead so that it's not you doing it. Yes. It says it. I didn't make that up. I didn't slip that in on, you know, write it in your Bible last night. You know what I mean? It's always been there, and it's always been important to God. And what I, you know, regardless of me, but what I try to do is find out what is important to God because that's all that counts. If you're going to stand before God, the only thing that's important to him is what counts. It doesn't can't matter what religion is taught. It doesn't matter what, what you've heard in this Bible school or in church or anything else. It only matters what the living God has on his heart. And I need to know, and I need to get that from him. And I can, you know, he gave teachers and people to speak and good, praise God. But at best, that can only stir you to want the Lord more and to go after him. But if you get stirred, you know, um, I was thinking about some sharings that I was thinking about doing in the future sometime, maybe putting some up on the web or something. And, uh, I had a title called uh, Christians, Stirred But Not Shaken, The Bond of Carnality. Anyway, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with what? The affections and lust, and that word lust is not evil, you know, I just want pornography or something, folks. That's your desires. That's the things you desire. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, it's anything that comes out of a desire from this kind right here. It doesn't matter what it is. Well, what if it's good, Brother Randy? What if it's good? I mean, I have a lot of good desires. I <clears throat> wish I had a gong right now. <clears throat> Get off the stage. <laughs> It is this person, Christ crucified, it's his desires that work in us now. That's what's real. That's what's of God. Um, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying another, one another. So it's talking about this different kind we, uh, how much time we got? Not much. Okay. Um, we, I, I'm going to say it like this, and I, I don't mean condemnation by this. I, 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 
I learn more from the law of contrast, I think, than any other thing. God contrasts me with Jesus. I learn more from the law of contrast. Okay, so, you know, I tend to teach with that. I use that thing a lot, but I don't, I never mean it as a point of condemnation. I just mean it as, you know, if we could just see that. But, but somehow in Christianity, we, because we don't understand kind, we have come with a whole great justification of being able to um, uh, be desirous of vain glory, which doesn't sound that bad, but it's not God's kind. He, he, you know, the Father, you know, sends the Son. The Father glorifies the Son. The Son glorifies the Father. The Spirit it comes not on His own, but by the Lord sending Him. He declares Jesus Himself. He doesn't, won't speak of Himself. It's this spirit within them to not seek vain glory and to lift yourself up. If somebody else does it, that's fine, but I'm not going to do it. You know. Somebody said, well, Brother Randy, why don't you have your name, you know, underneath the sign out there, you know, Pastor Randy Nussbaum. Well, first of all, they'd blow, they'd blow this church up. No, no. <clears throat> but before that, before anything was ever bad, when, when people liked us, Mike remembers that. <laughs> um, I, I, never, I never have. I never have. Because that's not important. Is, the, is this the house of God as it were? You understand what I mean when I say that. Is this about him? Is it about Jesus? Or should, you know, should we put our own name on everything and make everybody really you know, think highly, more highly of us than they ought? You know, I just look at it like if, if, you know, if I'm gonna lift myself up a, above him. Jesus always goes down. You know what I mean? He serves. He just loves. He gives. He pours out constantly. He doesn't ask for anything ever. If we don't ever take a moment to just ask him what's on his heart or to just try to get close to him, he won't push his way. He will not do that. He just won't. It's not his way. It's not the, it's not the way of God within the Trinity and stuff like that. And, and, um, and so I've found that, you know, anytime I start pushing myself forward, he just gets lower. And that's not what I want. <laughs> Gee, what kind of pa pastor would I be if that was what I was actually, oh, I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with that. Vainglory, that pushes him down. If that rises in me, it's got to go. You understand? I'm not saying I'm perfectly free of everything, but I'm saying I want to be. And I'm saying I care about it, not because it's sin, but because it's not his kind. And I'm sick of the other kind showing its ugly head inside of me at any time that it ever would. I don't like it. I don't go, well, you know, none of us are perfect. So let's see, that gives us at least this much room, you know. And we've done that. We've, we've found ways to be jealous of people and, or to, to have vain glory, just the things mentioned here, and to somehow still be Christian because Christian really doesn't speak of kind to the general public, to the general, you know. And if you wipe away Christian and you make it Christ or flesh and spirit or, you know, uh, Adam or Christ or bitter water or sweet water or goats or sheep you just put it all it's either one or the other and whatever's coming out of me is either one or the other oh i want it to be one now again i'm closing <clears throat> that's not that's not number one that's not trying to raise me up i'm just saying if we'll have this heart how much more will Christ come forward when we honor him first? I'm not saying these things for anyone to be in condemnation. Let's stay free, but let's not use our liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Let's, but let's stay free. Don't go in condemnation if you have. Get it under the blood 
but not just get it under the blood and go, well, I'm free, I can do it, and God will forgive me. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. The very principle that much of Christianity lives on, well, sin and just get forgiveness and everything's okay and God loves us. Romans 6, what, 2 says, well, then if there's grace, shall we just continue in sin and let grace abound? That's the Christian way. Paul says, God forbid. God forbids it. On what basis, Paul? Because he hates sin, don't you know? No, that's not what he says. He says, know ye not, that, what, what is it, God, as many as us as have been crucified with Christ are buried with him. And he, he starts going into the uh, reality of being dead. With Christ. That's, that's his answer. He really believes in this stuff. And God said, well, I like that. I, I like that you emphasize that. I, why don't you write me a letter? We'll call it Ephesians. Write me another one. We'll call it Galatians. Write me another one. First Corinthians. Write me another one. Second Corinthians. Write me another one. <laughs> Timothy. Write me another one. Thessalonians. Write me another one. Second Thessalonians. Write me another one. Titus. Because you're my man. You're going to emphasize what's important to me. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and um, we, we just long for you in a real way, in a true way. We don't, we don't want to be religious. And we don't want to think ourselves something. We want to think you're everything, and we don't want to be ashamed of that. Father, we want to be free, but not use that freedom to get away with Christian stuff. We want it to be Christ. And Father, your spirit is dealing with us and drawing us, and that's the beauty of it all. You're not condemning us, and you're not mad at us. You're drawing us not to you, but into you, as it were, in an understanding that we're already there. By osmosis, our mind is being renewed to what is true in your heart. And we want to start seeing these things by your spirit and flowing with that, your spirit, your nature, and these things. So we trust you, Father. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the grace given that Christ may be our life, that we may be one with him. And we're not going to make void the grace of God that you were talking about, that we're crucified and Christ is our life. Those verses are right together. And the grace of God to us is that we're crucified and that Christ could be our life. What a glorious grace. And it's true and it's real to you. Holy Spirit, break through and make it more real to us than we ever could have imagined. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're dismissed.